right, going to do another message out here in the frigid north woods of Maine. And uh, get this thing out of the way here, out of the field of view. Sorry if you're a tree hugger, but uh, it's actually a dead branch. It's actually good for the trees to prune them like that. So, excuse me, I do some more pruning. I'm, I'm making the earth better. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to talk today about why do lost people hate born-again Christians. You say, uh, I don't know if hate's the right word. Oh, oh, hate is actually the perfect word. And we're going to see it in Scripture. John chapter 7. Turn in your King James Bible to John chapter 7. You say, can I use an NIV? Well, it's up to you. I'm not going to stop somebody from using an NIV or an ESV or any of the other ones that come from the Vatican. But if you want the truth, then you go with the King James Bible. John chapter 7, verse 6. John chapter 7 and verse 6. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is alway, alway ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Jesus was a real killjoy, in other words. He's going around uh, preaching people that uh, they should repent. You know, same thing that Paul preached. Same thing that every Christian preaches. We preach against sin, you know. But notice it says there, verse 7, The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Keep that in mind. Go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 16 through 27. It says here, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should be, remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Stop right there. I thought we just read in John chapter 7 that, that uh, the world cannot hate you. But here it says, if the world hates you. You say, uh-oh, it's a contradiction. No, because when you understand why the world hates you, it's not really me that they hate. And it's not really you, if you're saved, that they hate. They hate the fact that you're part of the body of Christ. No, I have nothing against you personally. It's just these beliefs of yours. Where do our beliefs come from? Our particular sect that we're part of? No, they come from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gives us His Word and He says... These are the things that you condemn. These are the things that you uh, judge. You know? And we judge those things because Jesus Christ told us to. And then they hate you. But they aren't really hating you. They're hating Jesus Christ. Something to think about. <clears throat> but look at this. Let's continue. Verse 19. If ye were of the world... The world would love his own, but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. You know one of the quickest ways to tell if somebody is really genuinely born again or not? Um, how does the lost world treat them? Billy Graham was one of the greatest men of God that ever... No, he wasn't. How do you know? Because he was loved by the world. Um, when did Paul ever go and hang out with politicians? Uh, well, he was there and he actually got to see Caesar, but that's because he was on trial. Yeah. He wasn't hanging out with leaders and political figures and things like this. If the world loves you, it's because God doesn't. You're supposed to be hated of the lost world. Let's continue. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me... They will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Don't you love that? If they have kept the sayings of Jesus Christ, in other words, they'll keep yours also. Why? Because you line up with, with what the Bible says. You line up with the Scriptures. Huh. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Yeah, that's right. If I had not come and spoken unto them... They had, had no, they had not had sin, but now ha they have no cloak for their sin. 
Boy, I love that. You know what all these false systems of belief are? A cloak for sin. You know, they'll come out and they'll say, you don't need to repent of sin. Why? Because it's their cloak of sin. That's what they use to cover up their, their whole dirty life. You know, it's so funny. You got this guy, this, this uh, Stephen Anderson cult guy, Donnie Romero, and he's there and he's preaching the Bible and he's slamming his hand on the pulpit and he's, he's throwing a fit and he, everything else. He's a great Baptist preacher of the old, well, not old time Baptist, it's new IFB, so, and all this stuff. And the guy's going and running around with prostitutes, gambling, and doing drugs, all with church money. You know what, it ha what his uh, religion was? A cloak for sin. You know why Christianity is so popular? Because it's a wonderful cloak for sin. That's why. That's what it's all about. It's my dog here. And some squirrels in the background. Let's continue. There's a lot of squirrels watching too. <laughs> you know, but let's continue. You can enjoy the squirrels behind me. Up there in the tree and everything. Yeah, I'm going to keep preaching until I'm done. Deal with it. Stinking squirrel. He's probably going to make YouTube videos now hating me or something. But uh, now look at this. Verse 23. He that hateth me hateth my father also. You know why? Because Jesus is the father. He's the son of God and he's the father at the same time. You say, well, that's ridiculous. Okay, then you ought to read Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Unto us a son is given, unto, or unto us a child is given, unto us... No. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called, it goes down through, the everlasting Father. Yeah. If you hate Jesus, then you hate the Father. Because they're the same being. Interesting. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my Father. Wait a second, they've seen and hated both me and my father? I thought the Bible teaches that no man has seen the father. It's not possible to see the father. Then why would Jesus say they've both seen and hated me and my father? Nobody can see the father. Uh, yes, you can when you're looking at Jesus. That's why he says in John chapter 14, He that hath seen me hath seen the father. Hmm. Verse 25, But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. You know, that's what it really gets down to. All these people that hate my guts, they really don't really have a, they really don't have a good uh, cause for that. You have to excuse me. My mouth is a little bit cold right now. It's pretty cold out here. Sub-zero uh, wind chill and things. But that's the truth of the matter. They'll hate you without a cause when you're saved. You're there trying to tell them the truth. You're trying to, you're trying to show love and concern for family members or, or friends or co-workers or whatever else. And they will hate your guts. You know why? Because in reality, they hate Jesus. And you remind them of Jesus. Hmm. Verse 25, But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. We did read that. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth, forth, or proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Huh. We bear witness to what Jesus Christ wants to put through and wants to say? Yep. That's why they hate us. Understand? You know, it's so funny. The lost world, they will attack Bible-believing, born-again Christians more than any other group. You know, they go after Islam or something like that. They'll say, you know, some guy makes a comic strip against Muhammad or something, and they're, they're rioting and bombing stuff and blowing things up, whatever else, and, oh, okay, you, you need to apologize. They can, they can come out and attack Bible-believing Christians all the time, and the, and the media just whoop, looks the other way. And a lot of times, unfortunately, law enforcement looks the other way, too. Hmm. Um, I've seen it a couple times now with my ministry. Uh, there has been illegal activity against this ministry. And YouTube, Google, whoever, they just, whoop, I didn't see anything. 
And yet if I would do the same thing, all oh, copyright strike and violations and all kinds of things like this, why the double standard? Um, because they hate born-again Christians. They hate Jesus Christ. Let's continue. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. There's a lot of scriptures to go through. I'm going to try to get through all of them here without my battery dying. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Pretty warm right now, actually, believe it or not, because we got natural fiber clothing on and stuff, but uh, my hands are cold. <laughs> oh, well. No good if you can't suffer a little bit, huh? 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 through 17. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Now. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death. Hello. <laughs> to all the lost people. All those that troll my channel and just can't stop watching me. And to the other the savor of life unto life. Friends of the ministry. Those of you that understand that, you know, I'm imperfect and whatever else, but you understand my heart. You know what I'm trying to get through. You know I love you. You know I love the Lord. You know I love his word. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? I did a video on that years ago, ironically, outside in the, in the winter in Pennsylvania, on the, one of the pre-trib rapture moments. But, you know, it's a really good argument against the whole post-trib thing, Christians go into the time of Jacob's trouble deal. Um, the fact of the matter is, it says there, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Um, well, if you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, all those things can separate you from the love of Christ. You know, kind of weird. Jesus Christ is opening the seals and he's pouring out all this judgment and wrath on the earth. You know, I don't think he loves you at that point in time. I love you. <laughs> Here comes some more wrath. <laughs> Doesn't work. Verse 36, as, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus Christ loves me. And uh, none of you people are going to ever see any evil things happen to me, no matter how much you try or how much you want it to happen. Uh, the Lord's going to preserve my life until he says, okay, time to come home whether through death or I go up at the catching up. And none of you sick devils can do anything about it. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to put that in there. But notice again, you know, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come. Um, well, if you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, the Antichrist can separate you from the love of God. You take the mark, you worship the beast in his image, you're separated. I keep hearing this cracking behind me. I'm, I'm waiting to turn around and see one of these little squirrels with an axe, you know, topping a tree behind me or something here. I don't know. See, it gets it gets really, really, really cold out like this, and the, and the sap a lot of times in the tree will start to crack and things and pop because it's freezing. But Ephesians chapter 5. And by the way, if you're wondering, um, as I'm turning here to Ephesians chapter 5, uh, this is not just a little bit of snow on the ground. I have, I have snowshoes on, okay? And uh, I'm standing probably on about, I don't know, at least three feet of snow that's packed down. Probably more like four or more feet of snow. And I went and got my snowshoe caught. There we go. Ephesians chapter 5.
verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You're to think about the psalms. You're to, to speak about the psalms and things and, and meditate on those psalms. So let's go back to the book of Psalms. Psalm 9. We're going to see some more hate speech here. <laughs> How the lost world will hate you. Because you are born again. Because you remind them of Jesus Christ. Psalm 9, verse 13. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest up me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. Um, you know all these uh, wicked people out there that are coming out against the Jews and saying we are anti-Zionist and everything else? Um, when you get saved, you'll have a natural love and burden for the Jewish people. You're never going to be called a, uh, I'm not a Zionist or I'm not a whatever. Uh-uh. Sorry, you're not going to hate the Jews. Don't even tell me about it. Psalm 18. Psalm 18, verse 40 and 41. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. I find that fascinating. Here they are, all this time, we don't have to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. We don't have to pray to God. We don't have to this and we don't have to that. And uh, what happens when uh, vengeance finally comes from the Lord and we come back at the battle of Armageddon with the Lord, the Lord gives us their necks, you know, spiritually speaking there. And it says, then they're crying on the Lord. Then they're calling out to the Lord. And the Lord says, no, not going to hear you now. I find that interesting. And again, this is, this is stuff that can encourage you as a Christian. When you have so many people hating your guts, remember, number one, it's supposed to be this way. And number two, there's a great blessing that comes upon you when the lost world hates you because you're in Christ. And number three, we do get revenge. It comes back around. They're, they're the trium triumphing of the wicked is but for a moment, the Bible says. But let's continue. Psalm 25. Psalm 25, verse 18 through 22. It says here, Look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. You know, that's kind of a prayer of a Christian as well. Forgive all my sins. And uh, Jack Hiles comes out years ago and he says, well, if you have to repent, do you repent of all your sins? Do you have to remember every single one of them? Well, uh, the Lord will bring them up as time goes by and you'll repent of all of them. Okay? Not to be saved, but because you are saved. I mean, why don't you want to repent of all your sins? Why don't you want the Lord to just root out everything that's bad and evil and corrupt in your life and tell you, that that needs to go and help you to get victory over those sins. Weird. Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Hello. <laughs> o keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Again, praying for Israel. Praying for the Jewish people. But you know, it's interesting. Another reason why people hate me so bad is because let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Yeah. You see, there's a lot of people out here, and again, I'm not perfect. I'm not, a, I'm not the most wonderful preacher that's ever walked this earth or anything. Certainly not. But I try to have integrity and uprightness. I try my very best. And uh, there's a lot of ministries out there that have compromised over the years. This ministry doesn't compromise. Doesn't happen. That's one of the reasons why people hate me so much. And my wife as well. And my son and probably our dog. You know? <laughs> Sharing the hatred, you know? <laughs> we'll continue. Psalm 35. Psalm 35, verse 19. 
Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. <laughs> For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. You know, you know. again, I get so many people attacking me and things. You know, yo, you live out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we like to be kind of quiet in the land. We just kind of want to be left alone, you know. We don't want to be near the big cities with all the perversion and everything else. We'll see more as we continue. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha! Aha! Our eye hath seen it. I saw the expose video. I saw it. He's finished. Uh, you know. This thou hast seen, O Lord. Keep not silence, O Lord. Be not far from me. Stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord my God, according to thy righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. You see, when I judge my wicked enemies out there, I understand that judgment's going to happen in my life as well. That's why I believe in repentance of sin. And I want it. I want the Lord to judge me and say, that needs to go and this needs to change and whatever else. And I want you to preach this and whatever. I want him to judge me. Verse 25, let them not say in their hearts, ah, so would we have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at mine hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. And I did a whole study on that, on this psalm here. And that's my prayer. Those of you out there that favor this righteous cause, I thank you for your support of this ministry. Thank you for that. And those of you out there that are enemies and want to see me swallowed up and destroyed, uh, hasn't happened yet. Okay? Why? Because I'm on the Lord's side and you're not. How's that for harsh, critical... But you won't stop watching. <laughs> you know? Then the an idiot. He's a liar. He's a this. Okay, then stop watching. You can't. You can't. Why? Because I'm the one with the righteous cause, not you. You think I watch you, you stupid people's videos? I only do if I'm trying to get some kind of thing on you, make you look stupid or whatever else. It's just... Weird. Psalm 41. You know, the enemies of Bible believers... Um, you, you provide some of the greatest comedy for us, you know? That's one of the only reasons why we ever watch you. Just for fun. <laughs> you know? I mean, we, we're concerned about people's souls, yeah, absolutely. But when they're just wicked and they have no desire for repentance, then, you know, whatever. We'll get a good laugh at you. Psalm 41, verse 5 through 13. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? <laughs> and if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity, his heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me, against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him, and now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. <laughs> yea, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Oh, one or two times, you know. That happens so many times I've lost count. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me and raise me up, that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. You know, in spite of all the people attacking me and everything, this ministry continues to grow. And we see more people getting saved. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity, and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting into everlasting. Amen and amen. The Lord God of Israel. He's Jewish. You know, he came to his own and his own received him not. He's a Jew. So you worship a Jew? Yes, I do. <laughs> and I can't wait to see the time of Jacob's trouble get through and then the Lord set up his kingdom from Jerusalem and bring in the new covenant for the Jewish people. And all the other nations are falling down and things before the Jews. Oh, it's going to be fun. 
And I believe I'm going to be conformed to the image of, of Jesus Christ when I get to heaven. So guess what? I'll be a Jew then. Just a oh, whole terrible, terrible. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. See what I'm reading here. Verse 1 through 17. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pained within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. And you will get to that sometime, by the way. Let me just say it you know, very quickly there. Sometimes some of the attacks from the enemy are just so bad, you're going to think, I don't think I can get through it this time. It gets real bad. 5, verse 5. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Huh. How about that? Selah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Interesting because people say I'm crazy and whatever else and judge us because we want to live out in the wilderness. And yet David said the same thing. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. A lot of my enemies live in the city. I'm not ripping on you if you live in the city or whatever, but man, good night. You ought to get out of there sometime. <laughs> Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. For I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. Let, the, let death seize upon them, and let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. True, before salvation and after salvation. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. You know, a lot of my former people that used to be on Patreon, my former patrons, have turned against me. People that I thought were friends. Hmm. Yeah, I can relate to King David. Psalm 69. Two more places to go to here and then we'll be done. I don't mind being out here, you know, because you can, you can stay warm by moving. <laughs> but uh, this is kind of getting... Kind of a little bit rough here. But I enjoy it. Six, Psalm 69, verse 1 through 5. Save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying, and my throat, my throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. <laughs> they that would destroy me, being mine enemies, wrongfully are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. O God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Yeah, God knows my foolishness. God knows the places where I've messed up. And he could have stopped me at any time. I wanted to be stopped many times, believe me. <laughs> I wanted to be out of the ministry. And God just keeps on, keep going, keep going. Somebody else gets saved. Somebody else uh, just testimonies and, and things like that. It's amazing. One more place to turn to. Psalm 86. Psalm 86 verse 14 through 17. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul and have not set thee before them. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn 
unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and save the son of thine handmaid. Show me a token for good, that they which hate me may see it, and be ashamed, because thou, Lord, hast hope in me, and comforted me. You know, I, I've said many, many times, people can disagree with me. That's totally fine. I'm totally okay with that, obviously. Uh, it's, it's perfect for people, you know, not perfect, but, you know, it's fine for people to disagree with me. But this hatred of me, these people that just, just despise me, um, I pray for God's judgment to fall mightily upon you. I really do. If you've watched my videos over the years, and at one point in time you called yourself my friend, and you lied to me, and now all you do is just take my videos and cut them up and whatever else, I pray for the wrath of God to hit you and your home. Why? Because the Bible says I'm supposed to pray for those things. I'm supposed to speak to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. A day of wrath and judgment is coming upon you out there, the enemies of this ministry. I didn't say those that disagree. Get that. The enemies of this ministry, those of you who will no more be admonished, who spend your time just hating this ministry, your time is coming. You think you can get away with your little illegal acts and whatever else now and little Google will be on your side and they won't prosecute you. Your time is coming. The wrath of God is going to fall mightily upon you. And those of you that stalk friends of this ministry, I get the stories. I get people con contacting me and saying, hey, I, I, you know, people are contacting me. I, I wrote a comment on one of your videos and these wicked people are commenting and saying, you ought to turn against Brian and you ought to this and you ought to that. Yeah, I, I understand what you're doing. You bunch of wicked little devils, you. Your time is coming. And for those of us that are saved, let it be an encouragement. They hated Jesus. They're going to hate you. You say, well, can I escape? No. <laughs> Don't even ask to escape it. You see? Enjoy it. Appreciate it. And know that someday you're going to have something in common with Jesus Christ when you stand there and look at him face to face. Don't hide yourself and pretend that you're not really saved when you are. <laughs> you know? Uh, embrace it. So that is going to be it. Uh, just another video to encourage you out there. Lost world's going to hate you if you're born again. Just as simple as that. So I'm uh, going to go and get warmed up now because it's real cold. I don't even know what it is out here right now. I think it, they said wind chill factor is supposed to be somewhere you know, below zero, you know, negative seven, negative ten, somewhere in there is what they were forecasting. So... Need to start moving a little bit to get some heat back in my body again. All of us do. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.